Hello, I'm John Adams. Today I'm with John Levitz, the CEO of the NAFD. So thank you for coming in today, John. Great to be here. So first then, what is the NAFD? What is it there for? Well, NAFD is, is the main trade body for funeral directors in the UK. So what, what is a trade body? Well, essentially, it's a body that funeral directors can join. And our membership ranges from big companies like the Co-op and Dignity to, you know, very, very small independents. First of all, we provide a, a, a series of benefits for our members. But I think, you know, I think the most important thing that, that, that we do is, is provide assurance to the public that those uh, funeral homes in our membership are operating to a certain standard. For example, any funeral business which is in NAFD membership has to adhere, adhere to a code of practice. All funeral homes in our membership are inspected every two years. So we've got uh, inspectors who will go out unannounced, they will just turn up on, on, on the day and they will look around the premises and check that, that, that high standards are being maintained in, in, in that funeral home. I think that's really, really important um, stuff that we do. So, so with that then, um, if the standards aren't there in that funeral home, yeah. what happens then? Let's say an inspection takes place and the inspector finds that there are certain problems in that funeral home. Um, we will work with that funeral home to get them up to the correct standard. But in the worst case, there is then a process whereby we can essentially sanction that funeral home and and ultimately they could be removed from membership. So there is um, potential for sort of licensing regulation mm -hmm. in the industry now. How will that affect, does that fall into line with, the, with those inspections? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, I think NAFD's role will change a little bit because if, the, if there is a regulator, um, some, a, a lot of those inspections and so on will probably fall under the regulator's uh, remit rather than NAFD's. Um, I think our role, there will still be a big role for NAFD for supporting our members and helping them to achieve compliance with whatever the regulatory requirements are. One of the big issues that we, we, we think exists at the moment is this, that, that, of course, membership with NAFD is voluntary. Yeah. Um, it is, you know, a, a funeral home can decide that they don't want to belong to NAFD. Yeah. And if they're outside of that, they're not subject to a code of practice, um, there, and there is no uh, inspection regime or anything like that to check that they're operating to a certain standard. So from a member of the public's point of view, I think one of the things that they need to do is to check um, before they engage a funeral director, is this, is this uh, funeral director a member of NAFD? Are they subject to a code of practice? Um, what happens if things do go wrong? Yeah. It's pretty rare that things go wrong, but what happens? What redress is there if things go wrong? Because again, part of the membership of the NEFT as well, you have the NEFT Resolve. That's right, yeah. yeah. Can, yeah. You, can you explain that for us, please? Yeah, so NEFT Resolve is a, is, a, is a system whereby if something's gone wrong, if something's gone wrong with a funeral, it's pretty rare, it doesn't happen very often, but occasionally it does and the, the client is unhappy with what's happened and hasn't been able to resolve the issue with the funeral director to their satisfaction, they can make a complaint to NAFD. Yeah. We will look at that complaint and in most cases what will happen, we then refer it on to an independent body yeah. who will look at the complaint and they will, they will essentially mediate between the funeral director and the client to hopefully come up to a, a resolution. If it doesn't resolve through this, uh, what's called the conciliation process, it then goes on to the next stage, which is adjudication, which essentially is where the, that independent person will say, well, okay, I'm gonna look at this. I'm gonna make a decision as to uh, what should happen. And then that is binding on the funeral director. Yeah. Um, so it's an, important, it's an important backstop for clients. Yeah just in case, in those rare occasions, something go wrong, that they're not able to resolve it with the funeral director to, directly, they've got this sort of backstop that they can go to. And again, it's further evidence that the NEFD are trying to raise Abs standards across the industry, really. Abs absolutely, yeah. and, and it's really important that that process is, is independent. Yeah. We look at it, but we then send it off to an independent 
uh, uh, company which is expert in dealing with those kind of issues. So the education is a big part of what the NEFD do as well. Um, what, how does that work? It's, it's, it's a really important part of, of NAFD and, and I think it's going to become an increasingly important part of our, our work go, going forward. Essentially, we, we, there are qualifications which uh, funeral directors and, and their staff can, can, can take. And we're now looking at our, our, our framework of qualifications. So it covers the entire funeral workforce. Um, right from those who are new starters, who have just joined a, fu a, a funeral business, uh, through to more experienced funeral directors who can, ta who can take what is our diploma in funeral, funeral directing, uh, which is a higher level uh, qualification. So there's a sort of escalator, if you like, of, of qualifications at different levels. And again, you know, this is, this is all p part of our standards work, really. Yeah. It's making sure that um, when, when somebody goes to a funeral director, they're dealing with someone who's got appropriate qualifications for the role that they're in. At the moment, this is all voluntary. Um, but I think when, if, when, if, when regulation comes in, I, sus I suspect having certain levels of qualification will be compulsory. It will be, you won't be able to practice unless you've got the appropriate level of qualification. Exciting for the industry, isn't really it? Really exciting. So back to the support and the standards. With the pandemic yeah. that has happened recently, um, what was the NEFD's involvement in that, in preparing and supporting their members? Yeah, huge. I mean, it was, it was huge. It was an incredibly busy time. Um, and, and of course, uh, reg new regulations came in which restricted attendance at funerals. Um, those regulations did change at various points during the pandemic and a big part of what we had to do was get quite quick communications out to our members to say, you know, uh, often it was literally from tomorrow, this is what the law says you've got to do. There was also a lot of issues. Funeral directors um, uh, sadly um, suffered all the same issues that health and social care professionals did around personal protective equipment, PPE. There were shortages of PPE. Um, NAFD worked really hard behind the scenes to make sure that funeral directors um, were able to get access to the national supply because normally funeral directors buy their PPE from commercial operators. Commercial operators had none. Yep. They'd run out of stock. So um, we worked hard behind the scenes talking to government uh, and making sure that there was this backstop for funeral directors that if they didn't have appropriate personal protective equipment for their staff that they could, they could access the national supply through local resilience forums. I guess the main thing that we did, where there were issues, we would take them to government and lobby them and say, this is going to be a problem. So an example of that was even with the, the key workers initially, yeah, that yeah, was an example yeah. of that. We, we had to lobby, lobby hard for that. And uh, initially we, we were quite worried that funeral directors would get overlooked in having key worker status. Yeah. Um, and, and of course that would have been really problematic, problematic for, funeral, for funeral staff. For example, you know, Unlike other occupations, you couldn't work from home. Yeah. So what do what do you do if your ch your child yeah. is not going to school? Whereas, of course, for key workers, their children were able to go to school, which enabled uh, and enabled their parents to go to work. So it's import really important that funeral directors got that status. Yeah. So it's a, a really good example of. of, uh, well, of, of um, on behalf of the industry, thank you for the work you've done during the COVID oh, crisis. You. It was uh, it was a great support. The communication throughout as well was really helpful and clear. So thank you for good. what you've done. So the CMA, the Competition Market Authority, have been carrying out an investigation into funerals for the last 24 months. What's your view on that, and, and where do you think that's going to go to? Well, it's, I think it's a mixed bag for, for, for us. I, th I think um, we, we, we're currently looking at the, um, what's called the provisional decision report of the, of, of the, of the Competition Markets Authority. I think we're really pleased um, that one of the things that we've already talked about was around quality regulation. And they have made a recommendation to government, or they will, we think they'll be making a recommendation to government, that there should be quality regulation of the funeral sector. One of the issues that they've raised is, is that, um, that some funeral directors haven't been as transparent as they could be around their pricing. Um, and, and, uh, and in particular, 
um, are perhaps been a little bit slow to put, do things like put their prices online. And they are making recommendations, or, or actually they'll, they'll be going further than recommendations, m making it law. And we support that. We think that's a really, really good move because increasingly that's how people are choosing their funeral director. We've got some concerns around the CMA because I think although they're, they're talking about finishing their investigation, um, they are aware, of course, that the, the COVID pandemic um, actually kind of disrupted their work, really, during, during the investigation. Um, uh, and I think they are feeling, because their, their investigation came to an end, because it had to, because they worked to a statutory deadline, um, that there may be some unresolved issues. And they're talking about monitoring funeral directors um, uh, going forward. I think we think that's just a, just a bit over the top. You know, they've done the work. Um, um, it's time to let the business get on with get on with. Well, them. hopefully as well, the CMA will have seen the work that's taken place over the last few yeah. months yeah. Uh, during the pandemic, the yeah. great work that funeral homes have done across the whole United Kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so hopefully that'll, that'll be taken into, into account as well. Yeah, ab ab absolutely. And, and, and certainly, you know, one of the benefits of the CMA investigation is it has highlighted some of these issues and, and, and maybe those who had been, for example, a little bit slow around putting their prices or online have probably done it now yeah. anyway yeah. because it's been highlighted as an issue. But as I say, I think the investigation's done, some good stuff's come out of it. Um, it's really probably time to stop that now and just let the industry get on with it. And NEFD will certainly be supporting and making sure that, that the things that they have recommended and the things that they're saying that should be done are, will happen with our members. Great, thank you, John. Um, so there is a perception um, by some of your firms that the NEFD is aimed more towards the larger corporate companies. Uh, what would you say to those companies? Well, I think, I think one of the great benefits of NAFD is it, 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 it's an amalgamation of, within our membership, both those large members and small members. Um, and actually, you know, at our events and our conferences and so on, it's a great opportunity um, for everybody to get together to discuss, to, to discuss common issues. When I think about the benefits that we offer um, uh, uh, our members, it probably benefits the smaller members more, you know, because the larger members have got their own resources. For example, the education and training that we, talk, we, that we were talking about. A lot of our, our larger members have got their own training regimes in, in, in place because they can afford to do it. But the smaller independent member is not going to have those, those resources to, to, to do that. So I think a lot of our benefits are actually, you know, they are more tailored towards the smaller member than they are the, other, they, they are the larger member. But as I say, I think, I think one of the great things is really that, that it, it, it's a chance for, you know, if, if, if you attend an NAFD conference as a, as, as, as a small, smaller independent, you'll be sitting next to the, you know, the big business owners from, from big guys and you can talk about things. Yeah. You know, I think there's this huge benefit to, to I that. find that as well, how open the larger companies are. Yeah. Discussing practices, yeah. best practice. Absolutely. Um, so there, yeah. there are lots of benefits, aren't there? In, yeah. Uh, getting yeah. involved, really. Yeah, definitely. Um, so that's been really interesting, that has, John. Um, I know there's lots of things going on um, with yourself and the industry. What are your um, short-term targets for the NEFD then? What do you aim near, to do next? Uh, near targets, as I say, I think there's going to be a lot happening around regulation. Um, uh, and and uh, uh, we really hope, fingers crossed, that the government will say actually everybody needs to be registered and subject to a code of practice, that it's not a voluntary thing that you do by joining a trade body, it's something that everybody has to do. I think there's a huge role for NAFD in, in, on the education side of things. I, I really do think that's going to be a big growth area for us as more and more people will need to get qualified um, at, a, 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 a certain level. Um, and, and, I, and I think, you know, there's so much that we can do, you know, thinking about um, events and so on, online learning and things like that. There's a whole host of, 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 of support that we can give to funeral homes going, going forward. I think it's a really, really exciting time to be working in, uh, in the 
funeral business. Thank you, John. That's been really interesting and uh, very almost exciting to see where it's going to go as well. So thank you again for coming in today. Oh, thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure.